first off, I was wondering, how in the hell do you even teach itty bitty kids some fucked up shit, also known as grooming? How do you do that? How would a teacher even do that? So I put on this creepy old dude's face, and I'll take you on a journey with me to find out about groomers. We're going to call them groomers now, because they don't like it, because it points out exactly what they do. So I like that. I suggest you like it as well. Our friends over at YAF have the report out of uh, Bellingham School District in Washington. According to an anonymous tip they received, a first grade teacher by the name of Jennifer Miller read a trans propaganda book called I Am Jazz to the six and seven year old children in her first grade class. This was done apparently without asking the parents permission or notifying them ahead of time, of course. Now, subscribers to my YouTube channel, and if you're not a subscriber, you should become one, uh, may be familiar with the book I Am Jazz because we did a video a few months ago where I read that book, and this story out of Bellingham School District is exactly why I read it. Kids are being subjected to this kind of thing in school, and it's important that you understand what exactly we're dealing with, more specifically, what your kids are dealing with. To summarize, I Am Jazz tells the true-life tale of Jazz Jennings, a boy who began transitioning into a girl from the age of like four or five because his mom is a Munchausen abuser who projected her own mania onto her helpless little boy. Now that's my own editorial. It's not what the book says exactly. What the book does say is that Jazz was a boy with a girl stuck inside him. Or rather, he was a boy with a girl's brain stuck inside him somehow. Now, how does a boy end up with a girl brain? What does it actually mean? Isn't a brain inside a boy's head automatically a boy, a boy brain, literally by definition? I mean, is it like the definition of a boy brain? Uh, like, the, the brain inside of a boy is a boy brain? Isn't that what that is? Well, the book doesn't get into these questions at all. Here's how the book presents it. I'll play a clip here of Jazz Jennings himself, actually, reading uh, the book. Here it is. Let's watch. I have a girl brain, but a boy body. This is called transgender. I was born this way. I don't think so. When I was very little, and my mom would say, you're such a good boy, I would say, no, mama, good girl. At first, my family was confused. They'd always thought of me as a boy. As I got a little older, I hardly ever played with trucks or tools or superheroes, only princesses and mermaid costumes. My brothers told me this was girl stuff. I kept right on playing. My sister says I was always talking to her about my girl thoughts and my girl dreams and how one day I would be a beautiful lady. She would giggle and say, you're a funny kid. Sometimes my parents let me wear sister's dresses around the house. But whenever we went out, I had to put on my boy clothes again. This made me mad. Still, I never gave up trying to convince them. Pretending I was a boy felt like telling a lie. Their parents were confused. His parents were confused. I'm confused. Uh, his parents were confused when the boy says, uh, No, mommy, I'm a girl. And the parents say, what? I'm so confused. What's going on? What's, what's happening? Oh, it's just your kid being a kid. That's what's happening. Your kid, just, just your, your kid is simply babbling like kids do. Not much to be confused about. But this is what ch children are being taught in school. It's the brainwashing that um, first graders in the Bellingham School District had to endure, which is what caused some parents to email the teacher, understandably outraged, and demand answers. Now, as Yaff reports, the teacher, Jennifer Miller, responded to one email saying, yes, I did read this book. As a district, we are working hard to support all members of our school community and promote inclusion through understanding and compassion. Yes, understanding. She is promoting understanding by making wild anti-scientific claims about girl brains getting accidentally planted inside the skulls of little boys. Maybe there was some kind of mix-up on the assembly line in heaven. I don't know. And she's promoting compassion by normalizing the psychological and sexual abuse of children. Right. Right. Makes total sense. Right. But as I warned, this story gets even more deranged. Oh. Parents took their plight to the school board, hoping to find a sane person somewhere who would hold this pervert teacher accountable. 
But sadly, the school board um, did nothing, and that's probably because the president of the school board is another Jennifer, Jennifer Mason, who lists her, first of all, lists her pronouns in her Instagram bio, so it kind of tells you where she's coming from. But far worse than that, she also runs a self-described all-ages sex toy shop. Now, I didn't misspeak. It is an all-ages sex toy shop, and all-ages really means all-ages. Reading now from the YAF report. It says, an investigation by YAF revealed that Jennifer Mason, president of the Bellingham School School Board, owns and operates a self-described all-ages sex toy shop. According to a local paper, Mason said, while the store only sells for those ages 16 and older, 16 and older at the sex toy shop, people of any age can be in the store. Uh, I want to be, I want to show people if, I want to show people if sex isn't something to be ashamed about, um, I should be able to be an elected official and own a sex toy shop at the same time, Mason told the local paper. That's what it means to live your values. Well, that part is true. I mean, she is living her values. She is living by the values of a demented freak. And she's running the school board by those same values. These are also the values of the most powerful people and institutions in America. Which perhaps lends some context to a, a moment yesterday that got plenty of attention and provoked plenty of laughter when Representative Cory Bush, um, one of the newest members of the squad, I believed, addressed a House committee and used a certain phrase. Let's listen to that clip. I sit before you today as a single mom, as a nurse, as an activist, and as a congresswoman, and I am committed to doing the absolute most to protect black mothers, to protect black babies, to protect black birthing people, and to save lives. Thank you, and I yield back. Birthing people. Of course, many jokes can be made about this and have been made about this and should be made about this, and that's all good. It, It deserves to be mocked relentlessly and ruthlessly. So we can, of course, joke about how we're going to call our moms on Sunday to wish a happy birthing person day, or we can start you know, talking about how we need to rewrite some song titles, like when a man loves a birthing person, and man, I feel like a birthing person, and, and you know, American birthing person, and witching birth- birthing person. Um, you get the idea. All, all the jokes are great, but underneath the well-deserved mockery is a pretty insidious truth that they're trying to rewrite reality. They're taking all that is good and true and beautiful, and they're emptying it out and twisting it into hideous, unrecognizable shapes and making everything ugly and weird and meaningless. What we need desperately to understand and what cannot possibly be emphasized enough is that these people, and when I say these people, I mean the ones running schools and school boards and classrooms and state houses all the way up to Congress and the White House, they have a deep, seething hatred for all that they consider to be old and traditional and outmoded. We can say that they don't trust any truth that they didn't invent themselves five seconds ago. They want to break down not only human civilization, but humanity itself and build it all up again in their own deranged image. They believe they have a moral license to do whatever needs to be done in order to bring bring that about. Certainly brainwashing your child is one of those things. That's why that teacher, when she was called on it, she didn't apologize or anything like it. She said, yeah, I read the book. What are you going to do about it? I'll read whatever I want to your kid because these are my values and they're the correct values. They don't recognize your moral or natural authority as a parent over your own children because you're one of the bad guys in their minds and they are saving your children from you by indoctrinating them into the the cult of the chosen ones, the enlightened ones. This is what we're up against. It's the hill that we're fighting on. And it really is the last hill because it's the hill of reality itself. That's what the battle is over. And we really...